Hey there, we are going to talk about how my team and I share documents and how we communicate with each other on a daily basis. And uh, I was asked this question by Jen Gallagher in my free online classroom, The Front Row. If you're not a member yet, make sure and join us. Uh, my name is Jen Lehner, and I am the founder of the Front Row Mastermind and the uh, new Front Row CEO program. And um, I am a digital marketing and system strategist, and I am just happy to be here with you today to share a little bit um, of things with you that I hope you will find helpful. So I've got a, we just, uh, Nika, my um, partner in crime, put together a quick little slide deck for us. So um, to help me keep on, keep on track and make sure I don't miss telling you anything good. Uh, so let me click, actually, let me um, get that deck up. And uh, if you would, while I'm doing that, if you could just put into the chat, if you have any questions um, about sharing documents with a team member, um, or if you um, have any questions about how to communicate with your team, put them in there or any questions about like Google Drive in general, uh, just put them in there because Spoiler alert, that is how we share our files. And I'm going to show you how we set those up. I'm just trying to find that slide deck. Sorry, gang. Do, do, do. Found it. And if you put in the chat where you are in the world, and I'd also like to know what the weather is like, because it's it's like 50 degrees and sunny in Cleveland, Ohio. So I'm just, are you having the same sort of heat wave? Uh, okay, I've got my thing up, and now I have to share my screen. Hold on. Hey, Ben. Okie dokie. Sorry, Nika. Now you're going to have to edit all this for the replay. <laughs> uh, all this dead time. Okay. Am I sharing yet? I am not. Share screen. Okay, dokie. Okay, how we communicate and share our files. So today we're going to talk about the tools that we use to share our files and how we communicate as a team day to day. So our three main tools are Trello, Voxer, and Google Drive. Let me double check that I'm sharing my screen with you. I am. Okay. And whoops, let me get back. I mean, this is why you really should not like do a live stream on, on the fly because you're just going to get all tangled up. All right, let me come back to me. And we're going to just go right into the first thing that I want to show you is Google Drive and how we set up our Google Drive. Does that sound good? Good. Okay, so... Let me open it up. Okay, so here we are inside our Google Drive and a couple things I wanna point out to you. So there, first of all, the way that I'm doing this is not the holy grail. Like in fact, we're in the middle of changing a lot of this up. Um, our team meeting next week is in fact all about this we're gonna we're gonna do things a little differently we're gonna try some new things um, for this year see if they work better um, we've had a lot of growth this year and and which has caused a little bit of growing pains which you know those are good problems to have right but um 
me double check that I'm sharing my screen. I'm always so paranoid that I'm yapping on and you guys can't uh, see my screen. Hi, Alfredo. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so with that said, though, the, the whole idea, the, the most important thing is to once you come up with your system is that you stick with it, right? Because otherwise you end up just having a tangled mess, like the road to hell as they say, is paved with good intentions. So this is nothing to do with intentions and everything to do with just being very precise, as pre precise as you can, or things will go wrong and you're not going to be able to find stuff that you're looking for. And that's the whole point of setting up a system like this. So uh, I first started setting up my Google Drive folders a certain kind of way that I learned from Amy Porterfield. But Amy's system is very much centered around course creation. Um, however, it it is a really good system. So I'm going to just briefly show you that. And anything you see in gray, so we color code ours and any any folder that's in gray and you'll see 2016, 2018, 2019, those are in 2017. I don't know what happened to that. It's down there somewhere. But there, we've put those in black. So when the year is over, we, we change the color to black and only our um, colored folders are active. So, uh, and you know, and I would just take the numbers off the front so they would drop down to the bottom and we wouldn't even see them, except we do, I very regularly will click into these past years to grab something that I'm looking for. So, um, so I want to show you sort of like the Porterfield system that I, I kind of adopted. So you click into the year and then you've got a folder for program and a folder for back office. So, so simple and elegant. I love it. But you'll see when you start to click in and go into the layers, it really starts to expand. Um, so you click into program. And at that time, I had three little programs, my little course, summer camp and bird nerds. So let's go into my little course. All right. So now that spreads open two more folders members and promotion disregard that last one so members and promotion again so simple so elegant if i click into members now so members are like anything your members in the course people who are in your course are going to get right it's all the stuff for them so there's the modules for each course the facebook group membership site um graphics research um, admin stuff and videos. Okay. So then it goes, it, it expands out even more. So if you click into modules, um, let's click into lesson one, every single lesson is going to have this framework, slide deck, um, slide deck and PDFs, uh, or sorry, the PDFs for the slide decks, the PDFs of the slide decks. Good Lord. Um, it's so funny. I don't use ScreenFlow anymore, but this would be the raw files from your ScreenFlow or your Camtasia, then your videos, then your separate audios, any cheat sheets or work, workbooks, and your transcripts. So isn't that just so like elegant? I love it. The thing is though, um, as we have grown, we're, you know, we're doing more than just like courses. Um, but this served us well for for a while. And when we go to um, to our meeting on Monday and we sort of come up with our new plan, this will be more or less the framework we're still going to use inside of each of our programs, like our courses and stuff. Um, OK, so let me get back to the top. And I'll take you into our. Um, 2020 folder, which is gray right now because um, we don't have it completely built out yet. So we're working basically in two 2020 folders, but I'm going to go into, so you'll see at our top level, we've got programs, free content, joint ventures, and admin. Okay. And so now I'm going to click into programs. And by the way, Nico, if you'll Voxer me, like I can't see the chat right now. So just Voxer me if there's any questions or anything I need to know while I'm, um, while I am speaking and I will stop talking, um, and answer and jump back in and answer questions. Okay. So, um, here we are. Uh, and you can see that there's, um, wait a minute. 
I wanted to show you free content. Okay, so we're going to click into free content, and then we're going to click into podcasts, and then we're going to click into, this is our first podcast of 2020 about consistency, and we're going to click on that, and then we always have these elements for our podcast, the transcript, the graphics, the audiogram, and the MP3. Um, so you'll notice that, let's see here. If I click into transcript, you'll notice, and, and you can see at pretty much every level, there is a consistent way that we name our files, and that's called having a naming convention. Does not matter. Well, I take that back. There's a lot of SEO people that say it matters a lot how you do this. I cannot remember what they say. I think that like whatever it is you're talking about in that content should should definitely be in the file name. So. I mean, I do have consistency in there, uh, but but what I want you to see is that we talk about what it is first, all caps, so this is a podcast, underscore, episode number, and then the title. Um, so whatever your naming convention is, once you establish it, then you need to stick with it and your team needs to stick with it. Now, this is, um, oh, I'm sorry, Alfred is asking me to zoom in. Sorry about that. And you know what I should do? I should come off the screen as well, and that'll make it bigger. Let me just do that. Okay, that should make it bigger. And, and I'll zoom in too. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, whatever your naming convention is, you want to stick with it. And speaking of consistency, you want to be consistent. Uh, we are also in the process of revamping our... Um, naming convention. So I'll probably do an update of this live stream um, so I can share with you what all of our new stuff is. Maybe I should have waited to, to do that. But um, but the question was asked and I thought, why don't I just go live to answer her question and show her how we currently have our, um, our Google Drive set up. Uh, another thing that's really important when you're using Google Drive, and it's the only, I don't know, it's the only thing that I would say is uh, is sort of a negative, but there's very few negatives with Google Drive. I can't stand Dropbox for a lot of reasons. Um, I still have Dropbox. It's like I'm terrified to unsubscribe. Like I keep thinking I'm going to take everything in my Dropbox and export it over into a hard um, into a hard drive. And I am going to. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But I love Google Drive because it's so expensive for tons of storage. So, so inexpensive. But um, but the one thing that's kind of a negative is that you if you forget to set up your sharing settings correctly, if you don't do that correctly, then the people on the other end aren't going to be able to open it. Now, if these people are member of your members of your team and you have Google Suite, you have G Suite, then automatically they're going to be part of your, your G Suite. And so they will always be able to access anything that you share with them. But, but let's say that they're not part of G Suite and you don't have G Suite and you want to share a document with them, then you want to make sure and go here and then you want to click over here on the top right, click share. And then you can either give like the exact name or you could click get a shareable link. And this is where it's really important. It says anyone in Jen Laner Media, so that's my G Suite, can view. Um, I can I can change that, that they can edit, comment, or view. So this would even be for people on my team, but they, they would all be able to at least see it. Or I'm going to click here and click more. I'm going to say anyone with a link can access it, but I only want them to view it or I'm allowing them to edit or comment. But the important thing is you're just going to have to choose what's right for you and um, and just try to get in the habit of doing that. Okay. But collaborating in Google Suite is, I mean, Google Drive is is a, is a wonderful thing, but you it's, it's frustrating if you don't set your settings, your sharing settings correctly. Okay. I think I made that point well enough. All right. So let me uh, stop the share on this real quick. And... Um, see if we've got any questions. Uh, can you get 200%? The text is really tiny. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Trello. Okay. Now, 
there are so many wonderful, wonderful. I'm like, I don't know how these people make money because anymore, like between note taking apps, I mean, why would anybody even bother to make another note taking app when there's Evernote? The best. I know one note is great and all these other ones, but like it's just Evernote is the best. And the same and and the same thing goes with um these collaboration uh, project management tools. There's so many, they're so good. Um, and there's so many to choose from, but when I find something that works and it works really well, then I tend to stick with it. And that for us is Trello. I could be swayed to move to Asana because it is so awesome too, but our team, we know Trello. We've built out so many Trello templates, um, for people. We've incorporated them into our course. So like, uh, for my newest program, Front Row CEO, in the beta launch, I was experimenting with Process Street. And then we realized that, like, no, it's just it's just not as good. It's not as good for us. It's like, it has a million features. We used a quarter of them. So I'm sure that's why I, I'm saying that. But I'm just saying, we love Trello. But whatever you love, if it's working for you, stick with it. And don't... Um, you know, and don't jump over to Trello just because I'm showing you this thing. And unfortunately, I can't see who that is. But yes, I agree. We love it too. Okay, so let me show you real quick. I've got a call I have to get on in like 14 minutes. So I have to, I got to hurry this along. Uh, Kidoki, let's see, Chrome tab. Okay. All right, this looks so messy. I know that it does. But what I want to tell you is it really, really works for us. Okay, so this is this is where we go every day. This is our office. And I'm going to talk you through it real quickly. But um, most of our, most of the action for us happens right here. So, um, so, this is Nika's card. This is Flong's card. This is like the overall team card. And if I click on uh, Nika's name, you'll see that we've got all these beautiful checklists. And we're, we talk to each other by simply typing in, um, you know, tagging them, like at tagging them, right? And we've got all the checklists and, and we've got sorry, like daily task checklist for each person in there. And we communicate around that. Um, the other thing that I want to show you is that this is these two columns here. Podcast production is here. And then podcast completed is here. Okay. And, um, and so whenever we want to do a new podcast episode, for example, so this is what I'll do. So I, in fact, I need to do this today. So I've got to come up with a couple more ideas for some more podcasts. So this is a template, this like bubblegum pink right here. I'm going to click that button. I'm going to click copy. And then I'm going to change the title now to, let's say the name of my next podcast is um, how to establish naming conventions. Okay. And then I'm telling Trello keep the checklist, keep the labels that I've set, keep the members, everything's the same. And then the position that it's going to go in, I'm going to put it in position one on the list. And then I'm going to click create card. Now watch what beautiful thing happens right here. Look at the top now of the list. There's my card for, for the podcast. But here is what is going to make you stand up and like lose your freaking mind. Okay. If you're a person who gets very excited about systems. Um, so the, on this card, we have created, now I want you to know that the VAs create the systems. Okay. I don't create the systems and that's, that's a conversation for another day. This is all the instructions that always follow along on every card because we've just copied it onto a new card. So let's say something happens and Nika and Flong get abducted by aliens and I have to bring in someone else to do this. I could put anybody off the street on this card. They could watch the videos and then follow this, these beautiful checklists, which is incredibly detailed step by step. And it's broken down into each person's responsibilities. And we put a due date up at the top. So as soon as I create the card, I'll come over here and I'll put a due date on it. And everybody knows that this is, um, 
like this is a strict due date because we have to publish on two Tuesdays. And so I would say that this needs to be done. Like, let's say this is publishing on the 28th. So this needs to be done by the 23rd. And um, I click save. And now we've got a deadline on there and everybody comes in. So this is my to-do list. I have to write and record the episode, send it to the editor, and I have to I have to write the email about the episode, okay? Um, everybody else, Team Laner, is doing all the rest of this stuff, every single bit of it, and then the post-production, everything, and then I have to there's pre and post production. And then I come over here and I have three more things to do. I have to live stream about it. I have to share it on an Alexa briefing and I have to share it to my Facebook personal profile because they can't share it to my personal profile. Only I can do that. Uh, everything else they are completely doing. All I have to do is step in, hit record, record my podcast and all the rest happens right here. Um, it's a beautiful thing. And then as soon as that's done, we move that over to podcast completed. And you'll see we have some other random lists like um, swipes and examples, podcast ideas. Some of this could be cleaned up for sure. Um, in my current accelerator, I have a separate board for the accelerator, but um, there's some information on each person that I want to have at my fingertips. Things like uh, their birthday and um, the books that they have on cue to read next and just pertinent information that if I wanted to shoot out a gift in the mail real quick and surprise them, which, you know, I love to do, um, I could just click over here, their mailing address and birthday and all that stuff is on, uh, on those cards. Um, and then we've got our Kanban over here on deck, working on and completed. Okay. So we use this a lot as well. So this is everything that's on deck, on deck, right? on deck right now. So we need a new page for my Jen's programs. Um, it's There's a lot of courses I'm taking off. In fact, I'm taking most of them off and we need to update that page as soon as that's done. We start working on that, that's gonna get moved here. And as soon as we're finished, it's gonna get moved over here. So it looks a hot mess, but it really works for us. Now, if I go over here and you look for, um, where's the onboarding one we were gonna show, Nika? Do, do, do. I think it's this. Here it is. Um, so when we have a new person start, you can give them a link to the Trello board and links to videos and welcome them like right here is a welcome video and says welcome start here first steps next steps and um all in every single one of these columns are everything that they need to do this is completely automated there's a video and there's a checklist and everything they need to do and um it's it's wonderful and all you do is record the stuff you already do in your business um, but you just talk out loud while you're doing it and you stick it over here. Okay. Oh my God. I've got seven minutes. Okay. Let me come back over here to you. Um, hold on. Stop screen. Okay. So, well, that probably did. Oh, hey, Carolyn, that probably did not help you at all then, Alfredo. If anything, that probably um, scared you more because it looks so, it looks like so much. But um, I do have some basic Trello trainings, I think, in the, in the, in the group. Uh, if you go in the front row into files, um, look in the file section and there's a, a one file that says video trainings, click there and see if there's not a good Trello uh, training. You can also look in the unit section of, of the group. Uh, and the last thing I want to show you, the way that we communicate with each other is on Voxer. So uh, I am going to, let's see if it'll let me do this. Cancel. I'm going to show my uh, phone screen to you.
That's not working. Okay, then what I think I'm going to do in the interest of time is I am going to just... I am just going to show it to you. We're just going to go old school here. All right. So Voxer, is this going to work? It's that orange. It's that one right there. Okay. And uh, I'm going to click on it. And it's basically like a walkie talkie. So Nika, do you have your... You're okay. So, will you hold your phone? Will you unmute yourself? And if you want to come on camera, that would actually be cool too. But if you don't want to come on camera, just unmute yourself. Oh, hey. All right. So, you're muted. Hi, Dan. Okay. Hi. Okay. I'm going to boxer you so they can hear okay. the sound. Do you have your notification sound turned on? Yep. Okay. Nika. Hello. Yeah, I got it. I didn't hear it though. Because I think it's, I'm, I already opened my Voxer. So let me just exit the yeah. app. We got to hear, we got to hear the cool walkie talkie sound. Yeah. Can you try again? Yeah. Hello, Nika. Did you hear it? You guys? Hello. Hello. I heard yeah, it. I got it. Okay. Well, anyway, it makes a, re <laughs> a really cool walkie talkie sound. And you can do, too bad about this light. Okay, so you can do um, text, audio, um, video, attachments. You can really do everything. And I don't know, people always say like, how is it different than WhatsApp? What would you say it makes this different than WhatsApp, Nika? Um, I don't use WhatsApp, so I'm not familiar. You don't use WhatsApp with as much as you like travel and stuff? And no, I just use Messenger. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, a lot of people, a lot of people use WhatsApp because WhatsApp basically it's the same thing, but it doesn't make the cool walkie-talkie sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, Voxer.com is this. I'm sorry, I did a terrible job setting this up for you guys. So Voxer.com is like a walkie-talkie app that we can mm -hmm. talk to each other all day long, and we do. Okay. So here's the thing, though. Um, this is good for me and Nika and Flong and anybody that I work with to say, um, hey, did you see that thing I just put for you on Trello? Especially if it is timely, okay? On Trello, I can tag anybody and they're going to get a notification as well. But this is just sort of like one extra step to say like, this is important. Did you see it? Um, another great way of using, like, so this is more of the, well, how would you say? Like the... What would you say, Nika? Like more like the urgent stuff. So because it's of the notification, it makes me really grab my phone and listen to the message. So yeah. yeah. I got something in my hair. Like, what is that? I'm not even a grown up. I mean, I really I'm <laughs> I'm just I'm still having a hard time being an adult. But um yeah, so it's just it's just a super easy way to talk back and forth, but it's not a great I wouldn't re, I wouldn't recommend it to like routinely share files and stuff like that. Um, which brings me to my last point, I guess that I didn't really talk about is like how do you know what to put on Trello versus Google Drive versus anywhere else? And what what we do is we think of Google Drive is like that's our that's our big warehouse, our storage closet. So everything is always there for the most part. If it's uh, really just almost everything is there always. We might also have it on the Trello board, but the Trello board is more like if you went up to your room and grabbed your um, reading glasses and brought them down to the living room to watch TV. That's a terrible example, really, because it's not necessarily, it's duplicated, but I'm not having a, I'm not doing a good job. I'm not coming up with a good a metaphor or analogy, but um, the idea is like, that's where everything is. That is the warehouse. And we will, we will, we will link to it over on Trello. So we could put our fingers on something really quickly. Um, but it's there, even our Canva stuff. We have a library in Canva. We try to keep that organized in folders and stuff. And we don't have time to, I don't have time to show you that now, but uh, Canva is wonderful, at least the paid version, letting you put your images in folders, but it's not enough for us to just have it there. Like we have to download those 
and upload them into the relevant folder. Um, it drives me nuts when I can't find what I'm looking for. Like Nika will attest to that. It's, you know, and so, I mean, that frustrates everybody. So uh, anyway, let's see. Um, someone suggested I use Signal. I never heard of it. There's so many good tools right now. I, again, like I don't, and, and by the way, Voxer is free unless you want certain features. I, of course, I'm paying for it because I just seem to pay for everything. I don't know. It's like, I think things disappear if you don't have the pay or like your conversation isn't searchable if you don't have the, the paid one. Um, but Signal is probably great. Um, WhatsApp works fine. But I think in addition to having a team um, project planning place to communicate with your team that you need something like this or Slack. So I don't know why, why didn't we ever do Slack? Nika? I'd never, we tried it once. I just didn't. Do you like it? Yeah. I mean, because we've got already Trello and everything is already organized there. So we just didn't go in with, Slack. but I don't think Slack, Slack is not a replacement for Trello. Slack would more be a replacement for boxer. More, more like Skype. I think. Yeah, it is. It's more like, oh, that's another one. You could use Skype on your phone too, to do this, but um, tr but, but Slack is more like in the moment communication. It, it, it's a little bit Trello, but it's mo mostly like this. I don't know. I just never, I never figured, I just never, it did not interest me Slack. So we just never picked it up. So now after a few years, I think we have concluded that we're sticking with Trello, right? <laughs> yes. And, um, and that's, that's, that's what we're going to, we're going to stick with. Um, so <sighs> Lastly, I want to tell you, you're going to be the first people to see this. Uh, I'm going to inv invite you to this new webinar series. No, webinar series. Four-part training that I am doing. It is launching on February the 4th, if you're interested. Nika, if you've got the banner, if you'll slide it up there, or put it in the chat. But um, this is all about how to scale your business and reclaim your sanity. And hint, hint, it has a lot to do with systems and building your team by having an amazing VA like Nika. So um, make sure and save your seat. And I'm pretty sure when you get into that funnel, like you'll get a cool freebie or two as well. So thank you so much for joining me on the fly like this today, you guys. And uh, Nika, thank you for popping on here and have a wonderful, we got one question. Um, so I can't see who that is, but I, t I spoke about it a little earlier so you can watch the replay um, or I could just restate it. And that is basically that Asana is awesome. If you are already using Asana, then stick with Asana. Or if you're, if you haven't yet, in, invested your time into either because they'd have free versions. So I'm not even going to say invested money. If you haven't invested time in, in, in Asana or Trello, then um, spend, do that. They both have, they're, since they're both free, spend some time and really dig in and set it up for one project and then see which one feels better to you. Um, they're both, I think they're both fantastic. So I think if I was just starting out and, um, and, and just learning these things, I could have easily have been, I could have easily have gone to Asana. Okay. So now it really is time to go. I'm late for my call and uh, thank you guys. And I'll see you soon.